YouTube, it's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, undefeated, unified, WBC, IBF, welterweight, world champion, superstar boxer was widely considered by many to be top three best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world, and Earl the Truth Spence Jr. He responds to retired Hall of Fame iconic superstar, former middleweight reigning world champion Bernard the Executioner Hopkins and he also responds to all of the people that are questioning if his injury was real as well as Errol Spence letting it be known that he is back training as much as he possibly can Errol Spence uh, he says that he has to walk he walks six miles about uh, five to six miles a day because he can't have much impact on that uh he had a left sur he had surgery on his left eye to repair a detached, uh, torn retina, broken retina. Okay, and so with that said, uh, Errol Spence he responds to everybody saying and claiming that he was avoiding uh, Manny Pacquiao fight that was scheduled uh, July 24th with legendary eight division world champion, iconic Filipino superstar boxer Manny Pac Man Pacquiao. We know Errol Spence was uh, scheduled to face off against. Uh, Manny Pacquiao July 24th uh, and two weeks prior to the fight uh, it was reported that Errol Spence in a routine uh, pre-fight checkup Errol Spence uh, has was spotted have um, having a detached retina and Errol Spence he said he was having shadows in the corner of his eye and uh, but he didn't pay it any attention you know he didn't give it too much credence and now Errol Spence he's responding and Errol Spence is saying you know um now, you know, uh, that he definitely had a detached retina, right? And he says that he's lucky that they caught it because, you know, uh, essentially, you know, he could have lost his eyesight. So he was saying that he's glad they caught it before it got to the center of his eye and he would have lost his eyesight, right? And so now Errol Spence, he responds to Bernard Hopkins and all of the people questioning if the injury was even real. If you don't know Bernard Hopkins, he stated that uh, if it was to be true, and if it was him, if the roles were reversed, he would show the proof that he indeed suffered this injury and had to pull out the fight uh, due to doctor's orders and which saw, you know, um, uh, Errol Spence get, he got two other opinions. You know, uh, he didn't just stand by with the first opinion, first doctor uh, uh, orders. He went and got a second opinion in which this, uh, the same the doctor stated that, you know, um, he had the same sentiments the first doctor had is that he needed immediate, immediate surgery. And then Errol Spence, he went and got a third opinion, and it was the same results. The doctor stated that he needed to get uh, immediate surgery because it was bad. So Errol Spence, you know, he responds to um, all of these critics and all of the people questioning him. And he says, essentially, you have to be out your mind to think that I'm going to turn down a fight with a legend and an icon like Manny Pacquiao uh, and fake an injury. So he said, he stated that I'm back training. I can only walk because it can't have much impact. You know, you walk, you run, and you train, this impact on your eyes, right? You don't really, you don't truly understand or feel it because you don't pay no attention. You take it for granted. Uh, so... He can only walk, so he says that he's back, you know, um, to to the grind, and uh, he's walking six miles. And he says, you know, um, you have to be, you know, uh, you know, delusional to think that he would fake an injury to get out of a fight with the legend. So he said, Manny Pacquiao is a legend. He's an icon in the sport of boxing. Uh, he said he's top ten greatest fighters of all time. You know, uh, he said that, you know, uh, it's a uh, opportunity of a lifetime it's a legacy fight for me in my career and Errol Spence he states that uh, not to mention all of the money I stood to lose uh, and or stood to gain right and the pay-per-view all of that went out the window so Errol Spence is saying why would I you know uh, at the end of the day he says that you know I could lose to anybody nothing is given in the sport of boxing I just because I step in the ring and uh, the people say the you know um, the the odds makers they say that I'm a favorite that don't guarantee me a victory and Errol Spence is correct right I could I step in the ring for less money and and uh, um, 
you know, with less on the line, why would I not step in the ring for the high stakes, right? Because essentially you have to look at it from this standpoint. Earl Spence could have lost to Danny Garcia. Earl Spence could have lost to Sean Porter, right? Uh, so people attested to the injury uh, because there was footage that, that surfaced of Errol Spence and sparring. And in that footage, people said that the guy that was mimicking Manny Pacquiao was getting the best of Errol Spence. And then he and his team felt he wasn't ready, so they decided to pull out the fight. So Errol Spence is saying, I could lose to anybody. It's not guaranteed when I step in the ring I'm going to win any of these fights. There's no guarantee. Just because, again, just because the, the odds makers say I'm favored to win the fight and I'm supposed to win the fight, don't guarantee I'm going to win the fight. So why wouldn't I step in the ring with Manny Pacquiao, okay? Uh, he's a legend. And I stand to make tens of millions of dollars fighting Manny Pacquiao as well and get the pay-per-view back in. So it's so much I lost, uh, you know, that it, it wouldn't be worth me faking an injury to get out just so I don't take a loss. Even in loss, I win, right? Which is true. Even if he lost to Manny Pacquiao, he still was able to share the ring with an icon, like Keith Thurman was able to do. Uh, and he would get tens of millions of dollars, win, lose, or draw. So like Errol Smith said, I stood the game more than losing, taking the fight. So. He says that, you know, uh, you have to be out your mind and think that I would fake an injury, right? Because I would never fake an injury to get out of a fight with a legend. He says he's top 10 greatest fighters of all time. Now, I personally don't think that Manny Pacquiao is top 10, uh, but everybody has their own opinion on how they view fighters, you know, uh, and he's a surefire future Hall of Famer is what Errol Smith had to say. He says, he's a surefire future Hall of Famer. He's top 10 best fighters in, in, in the history of the sport of boxing. So why would I let that go by the wayside? Which he's right. Now Errol Smith, he shows that he's committed. He's back committed to the sport of boxing because he's already training. And since the Danny Garcia fight, we haven't seen Errol Smith out of shape. Now, in his previous fights, in between fights, you would see Errol Spence out of shape. But since he suffered that horrific car accident, uh, since he's uh, found a newfound respect and love for the sport, as he stated, I understand what the sport of boxing gives back to me. It allows me to take care of my loved ones, my family, my kids. And so he's dedicated, re-dedicated himself, reacclimated himself with the sport of boxing. And already, immediately, like he said, two weeks before a fight, a legacy fight, and a huge money fight, I pull out and fake an injury. That doesn't even make sense. So that's what Errol Spence said. He said, don't even make sense for people to think that way. Okay? Now, Bernard Hopkins, he stated that the truth will come out in the future, as he alluded to that he knew something that everybody else didn't know that this was a fishy situation that Errol Spence essentially faked it and so that's what he alluded to and that's why Bernard Hopkins said that Errol Spence if he was truly uh, injured that he would show the proof because that's what he would do in his career now again you can see Errol Spence already training he's already back uh, uh, walking he's doing whatever he has to do to be successful in the sport of boxing. And as I stated, Errol Spence is slated to be one of the greats in the sport of boxing and in just athletes overall. Uh, he's on a signature card with Lionel Messi, Floyd Mayweather, and Stephen Curry. The other guy on that card is Errol Spence. It's only four people on the card. So that speaks volumes of the expectations of Errol Spence in his career. So Errol Spence lets it be known that he'll be back soon. He's already training. He's already going to do what's necessary to get him back in the ring ASAP. Now, that version of Manny Pacquiao, Errol Spence said, it would have been all bad for that version of Manny Pacquiao. If, if Manny Pacquiao was absolutely 
at his best. Manny Pacquiao, 62 wins, 8 losses, 2 draws, 39 big wins by way of knockout. He himself was knocked out 3 times. Manny Pacquiao is 42 years of age, stands at 5'5 five five with a 67-inch army. So Manny Pacquiao is a legend and an icon in the sport of boxing. Earl Spence, 27 wins, no losses, no draws, 21 big wins by way of knockout. Uh, Errol Spence is 31 years of age, 5 foot 9 and a half with a 72 inch arm reach. So, with that said, Errol Spence has a nearly a 5 inch height advantage, nearly a 5 inch arm reach advantage over Manny Pacquiao, and he's the younger guy, 11 years younger. And even he's technically sound, he's technically gifted, they're both southpaws. So, even if Errol Spence was fighting Manny Pacquiao that was absolutely in his prime. Errol Spitz would give Manny Pacquiao tons and tons of problems because of his technical technical skill set, his ring IQ, and his savvy, okay? So he would give Manny Pacquiao problems. So pure boxers, boxers with, that are very technical, that are savvy, you know, uh, that are patient and can be counter punches, they've always given Manny Pacquiao problems throughout his career. And there's no reason to think that Errol Spence would not have given Manny Pacquiao problems if Manny Pacquiao was in his absolute prime. And here, like Errol Spence said, this version of Manny Pacquiao that had no legs and Manny Pacquiao is making up excuses and he's saying that he had leg cramps from the second round on. And uh, a guy like Cuban star boxer, who's now the WBA super champion officially in your Dana Sugis, who has um, 27 wins, four losses and a draw. He has 12 wins by way of knockout. He's 35 years of age at 5 foot 9 with a 69 inch arm reach. So your Dana Zugas, Manny Pacquiao described him as being what would have been his easiest opponents in his career. Uh, but if it wasn't due to the leg cramps, and then Manny Pacquiao said, if this was two years ago, you would have clearly seen me dominate your Dana Zugas. So your Dana Zugas technical skill set gave Manny Pacquiao problems. Your Dana Zugas using his jab and straight right hand is what gave Manny Pacquiao all the problems that he had. Okay, Manny Pacquiao had no answer for the jab. Manny Pacquiao had no answer for the sweeping right hand. He had no answer for it. Manny Pacquiao's advantage is his southpaw stance. That's why he loves to fight orthodox fighters who are right-handers. His, his hand speed, his foot speed, and the fact that he has a lot of power in his right hand. That's what gives his opponents all the problems. But as we saw this past Saturday, his foot speed was not there. So he could make it on the inside. He could go forward. He couldn't go backwards. So he could make it on the inside, but he couldn't get back out in time. And Manny Pacquiao's never been a defensive wizard. So the fact that Manny Pacquiao couldn't get back out, he was getting countered with the jab and the right hand all night. And you can see in footage later on that Manny Pacquiao couldn't even open his eyes. His wife, Jinky, had to feed him. So that lets you know everything you need to know, okay? That Manny Pacquiao uh, would have possibly been stopped by Errol Spence Jr. And there's no reason. Errol Spence fought Sean Porter, who is a very aggressive, very young, very strong, young, violent fighter who gave him uh, issues. You know, he, like he said, he could have lost any other fight that he stepped in the ring with. There's no guarantee in no fights that you're going to guarantee to be win. So why not take a legacy fight with Manny Pacquiao? So there's no guarantee that you're going to win any fight. Okay, when you step through those ropes, you put your life on the line every time you step through the ropes, and you don't know the outcome is going to be. You're confident that you're going to win, but you never know. Uh, Mike Tyson was confident that he was going to beat James Buster Douglas, and so was the rest of the world. That's why it was the biggest upset in the history of sport of boxing. Uh, everybody was confident that now two-time unified heavyweight world champion, British superstar boxer Anthony Joshua, was going to beat uh, Mexican uh, superstar boxer, who is now the first Mexican heavyweight world champion and he did so unifying in, in dramatic fashion uh, dropping Anthony Joshua four times and stopping him in the seventh round of their fight June 1st of 2019. Nobody expected that. So there's no giving in the sport of boxing. So he can lose any other fight. So any fight, anytime you step through the ropes, you can you stand to lose. Okay? So the fact that Errol Spence is saying, I could have lost any fight I stepped in the ring with. Why wouldn't I put it on the line for a legacy fight and the biggest payday of my career with all the pay-per-view numbers we stood to uh, 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 make, uh, to do, and, and the money we stood to make. So that just makes sense. So Errol Smith said, uh, anybody that believed that I faked the injury uh, is, is is not making any sense. So he responds to Bernard Hopkins. 
But that's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy Blue. Blue Blood Sports TV. Hit like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV. All one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire L D B C. Shout out to New Media. Shout out to Black Media Row. Make sure you like and share these videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace. Hey, Bumgarner, you're watching Blue Bud Sports TV. Wow.